Hello audience. A lot has changed on this since the last update. Most obviously, as you can see, we've started painting it. Now, I mentioned before that I was going to try and at least finish the body before we started painting it, but the painter decided to start on it now and, well, I'm not going to stand in the way of progress. So I've been in a hurry to try to finish the outside of the body so it's at least ready for it. I'll talk more about painting this in a future video, but what I also did was finish the doors. I got them nailed together permanently, aligned and working. And as you can see, I got two of them already painted. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I did all that, using the left rear door as an example. Now I've been working on this pretty much for the past four months off and on while working on a lot of other stuff, so the video is probably going to seem a little bit choppy and incomplete, and that's why but you still get the general idea of what's going on. So let's get started. You may remember several videos ago, I cut this edge off because it was in the wrong place, then welded it back on. I've since found out it's in the right place now, so I'm going to finish welding it up. And here's the left rear door from the way I left it. The wood frame has pretty much been made. It's just kind of sitting together. But it fits okay for now. So the next thing we need to do is install the door latch. So the first thing to do is install the striker on the door post, which it's already notched out for, so there's no guess where that goes. Then, we'll have to line up the door, figure out where that goes, so we know where the latch goes. Then, we notch this out, and this part, for that. The next thing we need to do, before it gets assembled permanently, is there's a piece of wood that goes across here. So we have to notch out the front and the back for that. Kind of like that side. Now I'm getting ready to 
assemble the door frame permanently. But first I'm going to mention a few things about it. Now, the way I have this, I attach these three pieces with a screw on each end. Reason being, it'll hold it solid, but I can adjust these to angle them just right to fit the body. It's not really something you can make patterns of or plan out in advance. You've got to wait till the body's finished before you can get all these dimensions. So, the first thing I did was assemble these and cut them aligned. Then I made the piece that goes on top to conform to that. Now making these was really tricky. Reason being, I just had no patterns whatsoever and there's not that many straight lines on them so there's nothing you can really measure from. Pretty much what I had to do with each of these was start with a piece of wood that was way too big, line it up and trim it down little by little until it fit. I ended up wasting a lot of wood doing that, but it ended up working. A few tricky things about this is obviously the door curves here and it curves on the inside and there are two different rates. This has kind of a steady curve to it. This one has to be straight right here for the latch and then it curves in a lot more at the bottom. This part at the back is kind of the same way. It has to be straight to line up with the door hinge and then it curves down at the bottom and these curve at different rates. The bottom of this is parallel with the frame rails. The top of this angles out because the body gets wider as it gets towards the back. So both of these lines are different. And the angle on the inside here, because it's straight here but angles out here, that slowly twists as it goes up or down and the back is the same way. So making each part was pretty frustrating. I ended up wasting a lot of wood and you'd think that well, once you've made one, you have patterns to make the other. You just make it in mirror image. Well, not exactly, because the left and right are not dimensionally the same. I tried to make them exactly the same, but they just didn't really come out that way, which is the way the original bodies were too. That's just normal. So I pretty much had to start all over again for the other side. And now the next thing I'm going to do is glue the door frame together. Now you may have noticed with the structure for the rest of the body, I didn't really glue anything together. It's all mostly held together with screws. And the reason for that is it holds it tight but allows some give to it because these are on the move when you're driving. They twist and bend around a lot. If it's held together with glue, it might end up being too solid and it can be prone to breaking or cracking apart and then it's not tight anymore. Now, I haven't scientifically proven that your car is going to fall apart if you use too much glue. This is just standard practice with coach building. I don't really think it makes much of a difference either way with this case. With the door, it's a different story because these are not anchored solid to the body. They're just held on by the hinge. And once you get them fitting the body pretty well, you want them to stay dimensionally the same way for as long as you can. So making them as solid as possible is a better idea. I put the door skin back on just 
to make sure it's being held in its proper shape. And I'm using ropes and wood blocks to hold it at the right angle. Because even still, after all that, it doesn't fit perfectly. And I want it being held together tight while it's drying. And this is what I did with the other doors and it worked out. So we'll give it about a day or so to dry and then see what we have. And now it's dried. So the next thing we'll do is add the rest of the wood to it. Now, like I said before, there's a piece of wood that goes across here that I have to make. And there's a block of wood that fills in this space, which I've already roughed out. Now I need to cut it to size. It's some time later, and here's the wood block to go here. Now I'm going to glue it all around here. I also have a screw here and here that will pretty much just hold it until the glue dries. And both of these will be hidden when it's finished. So that's the next step. Another thing I'm going to do is the screws that I put on each end, I'm going to remove them and replace them with slotted head screws. Now they didn't have a screw here originally, but replacing it with an authentic head is easier than trying to hide it. So that's what I'm going to do. And that's pretty much it. Now the next thing to do is all these edges are kind of rough. I need to file and sand them, smooth them out. Then I'll give the whole thing a couple of coats of primer and then it'll probably be ready for final assembly. Alright, I got the door frame coated in primer. Now I painted it with this stuff. This is what the painter recommended. This can go right over the wood, and if desired, we can spray urethane directly over it, which we've been doing already and have had pretty good results with. And there's the sheet metal. I just spray canned a little primer on where the wood touches it. And now we're going to temporarily assemble it and put it back on the car. Now for assembling it for now, I'm using upholstery tacks just because they hold and they're pretty easy to remove if we need to adjust it. And when it comes time to assemble it permanently, there's a different kind of nail we'll be using and I'll show you then. Now the bottom of the door, as you can see, has no nail holes and it's not finished. And for the time being we're going to ignore this, but I'll show you how I'm going to install it later on. And this is how the door fits currently.
So the door hinges, up to now, I've been assembling them with drywall screws. Reason being, they're cheap and they self-thread really easily. And that's just what I use to get it in the general area. Now typically I've just been using this screw hole and this one. Now this is good for figuring out the general idea of where they go because like I said they're really easy to install and if you're only installing two of them they're really easy to relocate also. But the problem is with just two screws holding them in they're really flimsy. You need all of them in to get it as strong as it's supposed to be. And before just two screws were good enough but the door is now heavier than it was before and it's forcing the hinges to distort. So now I'm going to drill these out and install the proper size screws with nuts on the back of them and install one for every hole so that it'll be as solid as it should be. Now that might mess with the alignment on it. We might have to bend the hinges around or make shims for it to compensate for that. Maybe not, but the good news is with it the way it is we've established the door will fit with the hinge in this general area. Now, when installing the new screws, it's important that this part does not move at all because it's aligned pretty good. So the two screws that I already have, I tightened them down as much as I could, and for the time being we're going to leave that, drill out all the other holes, and install the screws on there. Then when those are done, I'll remove these and drill those out. Another thing I'll point out is these two holes I'm just going to use normal wood screws because this one doesn't really do much of anything and this one I can't drill it all the way through because of this piece. And for the same reason some of these on the body side I'll have to also use wood screws. Now the moment of truth. Well, actually it fits about the same as it did before. The gaps are pretty even. So that's good news. I think the only thing I can see is it looks like the front of the door is a little bit higher than it was. Maybe not. So, I think I'm going to leave it that way. Alright, we have the door fitting pretty good now, so it's time for final assembly. We're going to nail it together for good. So here we have the original door panel, and the bottom of it, like the rest of it, is held on with nails. The problem is, to make this work, the bottom of the door frame has to be at least a quarter of an inch wide and it gets in the way of the sill so the way they fixed that was they took that much out of the sill now the problem with that is like I've said in previous videos the sills on a 1913 body are already underbuilt and then they made them even thinner where the doors are which is the weakest point of the body now I wanted to redesign this part of it so I didn't have to notch out the sills but I didn't want to stray too far from the original design. So what I came up with is I made the bottom of the door frame thin enough to clear the sill without notching it out. The only problem with that is if I make it thin enough at the bottom, it's not wide enough to drive nails into. So I trimmed it up about three quarters of an inch. 
to where it is wide enough to put nails in and made this to go between it. So the bottom of the door panel will just fold over this and weld on if needed. I made the other two doors in exactly the same way and at a glance you can't really tell there's any difference. Even if you know these pretty well, you really have to look down here. So at a glance it kind of looks like it should, which is what I wanted. Now this is the type of nail I'm using to hold everything together. Now if you notice here, it's got like this spiral design to it and this helps it to grip the wood really well. And on a car that tries to shake itself to pieces whenever you drive it, this is important. The only problem is they're really difficult and sometimes impossible to remove. But if you don't want it to fall apart, that's a good thing. I don't think Ford was using these at the time, but they were pretty standard with most other coach builders. Now, I used to be able to buy these already done, but the company I was buying them from doesn't sell them anymore. So, I've been making them. I get a package of these, whatever they're called. And it comes with these. So then I just file the head down until it's really thin. Like this one. On the parts that don't show, I just use these as is. Now that's a lot of extra work, and there might be a better way of doing this, but I didn't know what else to do at the time, and it did get the job done. And the door is pretty much done now. It's currently out getting painted. Now the next thing I'll need to do is take the hinges off, get them sandblasted and painted. There's also a few little details I need to finish up on the doors, a few small parts I need to make, but we'll worry about all that later. So anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.